It's about you, you, you. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree. And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me. And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee. Just like my straight white male dad did to me. So if I see a penny on the ground. I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need I've got a pile of broken mirrors And I'm walking under ladders And I'm spilling tons of salt But to me that doesn't matter Cause my skin and my gender and my orientation Are the best things to have if you live in this nation I recommend it highly A penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Hey everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree We usually do this show at 7pm Pacific on Wednesdays But uh, it was hot today so we're doing it at 9 p.m. Pacific today. Um, also, uh, podcast listeners, you're going to get a little bit of more of what it's like uh, during the post game. We're just going to kind of run it like red light the whole night. Uh, as always, you can support the project at uh, eplex.store or at patreon.com slash echoplex. And uh, I'm producer Dave. You can find me on Grinder. And I'm HK Perrin. You can find me on Mastodon at hperrin at port87.social. Fantastic. Hear any, hear any interesting news today, HK? about any of maybe the people that we've talked about on this show i did you know it turns out some of them were being funded by the russians <laughs> imagine that oh oh you know they're all like oh i didn't know i didn't know you know who the only one i believe that didn't know is dave rubin because dave rubin don't know nothing <laughs> yep but <clears throat> Yeah, we'll, we'll find out more. I was trying to find something that, to do uh, to like do tonight on it, but it just dropped today, and there's not enough information about it. So, but I want to. I can't wait. Maybe we're going to see a proper meltdown from one of them, <laughs> like for next <laughs> week. I wonder how mad like Eric and Brett are that they didn't get any of that money. <laughs> <laughs> Where was our cut? We were doing the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll learn more about it. Uh, probably I'm trying to find actually an interview guest, somebody who's maybe more familiar with um, like how this kind of stuff works. Possibly like an attorney or somebody, uh, somebody in the legal field who could tell us more about um, what th what this indictment means and like what it might mean downstream for the people who are uh, not necessarily named, but it was pretty clear who they all were in the fucking indictment. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dave Rubin don't know nothing but his husband's name, and that's just because it's the same as his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you remember for a while we were covering these people that were calling themselves fucking sense makers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them crawled out from whatever fucking rock he's been hiding under for, since, since fucking 2021 and decided to go on the <laughs> Benjamin Boyce show. Um, Benjamin Boyce, uh, if you remember, um, we first covered him tigers hk tigers he was the guy who interviewed oh, yeah. jamie yeah, tigers. mustard <laughs> uh tigers. tigers yeah like uh how what, what was the way he put it like how can you have sex if you're being chased by a tiger or something <laughs> it was there was a lot there was a lot going on with tigers and that <laughs> yeah so um and then uh we've also we've just come across him a little bit um i actually got uh, put on to Ben Boyce a while ago from by, by decoding the gurus guys not like on their show but just in like a chat I was having 
and that they were like, "Hey, uh, you should um, keep an eye on this guy. He's probably going to start, I don't know, becoming more uh, prominent or whatever." I forget. I think it was talking to Chris Cavanaugh, mm-hmm. kind of chatting it up with him. But um, here he is a uh, Jordan Hall. Jordan Hall, uh, you, if you remember the, um, you remember the uh, Rebel Wisdom, that very the British guy who would just look up up into the left every time yeah. he was thinking. Do you remember him? That's yep. how we found Jordan Hall was through. Um, now I forget that guy's fucking name already. He was the guy. Remember the breath work <laughs> where he was charging people like eight hundred dollars to like, get on a Zoom <laughs> call to hyperventilate with him. <laughs> now I forget the guy's uh, name. The pondering guy. Yeah, we'll the, call the pondering him guy. I forget his fucking name now, but um, that's how we that's how we found Jordan Hall. So this ought to be interesting. If people are playing bingo, this is probably a pretty good one for your fucking bingo card. If we're uh, all things considered, because you're going to get a bunch of the keywords here. Without any uh, without any further ado, here's Jordan Hall. Courage in the Age of Madness on the Benjamin Boyce Show. Hmm. I've decided kind of arbitrarily, but not to begin my seasons in September because I was subjected to the public school system growing up in uh, North America throughout the uh, 80s and 90s. So that's the podcast a has seasons. Think of a new year. And so here we are. Seasons. Yes. So I thought that this particular interview or conversation rather is a good place to start. And I speak with Jordan Hall, who is a teacher, I think is the best thing to call him at least that's how i interacted with him during this interview where we dive deep into the underlying structures of the problems that i've been exploring gender politics ideology all that stuff can be oh fun the the usual fare that is a weird looking chicken i like its hair though really 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 deep and it's just amazing it really blew my mind maybe they'll just have chickens the whole time and uh so i'm not going to say anything else without further ado here is Jordan Hall. Howdy, uh, sir. Morning. Afternoon. Okay, I gotta say, we've seen a lot of like weird video setups. There was that guy who had like the laptops on the roof. Right. This takes the cake. <laughs> He's just got his guest's video in a square on top of part of his video. And they're both like soft edged. Yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty fucking weird. It's pretty fucking weird. Also, just so everybody knows, that's an Apple computer shirt. You wouldn't want to confuse this guy with like a you know an ally of queer people or anything. Hmm. This is pretty weird. I don't know what's going on here. Um, it's uh, fucking filmmaking, I guess. Right? Filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess you could tell that that's an Apple computer because that rainbow is not accurate. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing? Is that Atari? Uh, it's, uh, Apple. Apple. Oh, OG Apple. Gotcha. Yeah, OG. I uh, wandered onto their campus a few years ago. What is he like? Not ready for his own show? Like, what is he doing? Like this is this is all very this is all very unsettling. Actually, the beginning of this. <laughs> a few years ago, hit somebody with a brick, stole his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite there in my life. (laughs) Could I uh, ask you to uh, lower your camera just a bit or angle it down just a bit? Give me a little... This is stuff you do before you start recording. Oh, we fix things in real time all the time. But uh, what? what, 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 Does he have a live show? I thought this was like recorded. That I don't know. What I'm wondering is, why did he have him move the camera down just the tiniest bit? Like now we can see his shoulders. You got me, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, You're right, Ben. Sorry, is Benjamin Boyce gen- like is he, had- is he malfunctioning? What the fuck's happening? Had a neurotic yeah. guest want me to change their their photo at the last minute, so uh, no worries. Yeah, do whatever you want. Wait, did he even move the camera? He moved it down and then moved it back up. I think. Uh, I think he moved it down. I, I think um, so. I'm pretty sure he's standing. Like maybe he has a standing desk. And he's Jordan, doing this interview standing. I'm which, almost a hundred percent sure that Jordan Hall has a standing desk. Yes. Good for him. Um, what have you been working on? Oh boy. Um, 
Well, a gigantic project called the Internet of Humans has kind of blown up in my in my world. Um, okay. What? Which is somewhat apropos. L literally, one of the principals flew in to town to sit with me for a couple of days to just like do it. Hasn't the stuff. internet always it's been adjacent. humans? On the internet, no one knows you're a dog. <laughs> no, the internet's cats. cats. This is just a play on like the internet of things, right? Yeah, uh, man. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> this is a very thoughtful man. He probably thought about that for like a week. Like, we did ayahuasca, probably. But like the internet of things was a play on like the internet. It's funny. It's adjacent to a project called the Trust Foundation, um, which is to say, once you recognize that there's a whole series of problems, let's say let's go with like misinformation. So misinformation, disinformation. You're like, well, that's actually not the right way we've been framing the problem. So you go one level deeper, and it's like, oh, it has to do with the the way that we're able to our institutions are able to engage in truth formation at all. Like, okay, keep going. Oh, it's that our institutions don't actually have trust. We can't trust the institutions that we have in any way. Great. <laughs> Shelly, you, you missed the best part. Uh, this is very uncomfortable at the beginning of this fucking video. On the left is Benjamin Boyce, and on the right is uh, uh, Jordan Hall. We found Jordan Hall when he we were, we were covering the sense makers. Oh, is that we don't actually currently have a form of institution to do this thing that is intrinsic, that is trustworthy. Like, got it. So what we need to do is actually go down to that level and then be able to imagine what would be a trustworthy set of institutions that can do the jobs we need to do. <laughs> and then work up from there. And then all the problems start to fall asleep. Be, you know, they, they can work. And so that was that group. And that you're going to fall asleep. This guy's solving all of the world's problems right now, dude. Well, no, but it's, isn't it funny that are they all talk like, like, oh, we, we, we've just lost trust in institutions. It's the same shit again, right? Like it's, yep. and what would it look like if people trusted an institution? He's like, well, maybe if I was in charge of all the institutions, then everyone would trust them. It's, it's the same. How would you, how would you make an institution that's trustworthy? A well, very Weinsteinian. <laughs> and I mean, Eric, not Brett. <laughs> tell you too much about it but they actually came out of the J joint special operations command so we're talking the guys who you know navy seals delta guys and as they were pulling on the thread of how to deal with the expanding scope of what does decentralized terror look like they began to realize that um wow Everything gets implemented. He just said, wow, at like right in the middle of a, he didn't finish what he was saying. It's like, he's not even there. It's so, this is, something's going on here. This is, are they on like a fucking, like a delay, but like, instead of like just a second or two, like a week. <laughs> you know, as war moves into fifth generation of warfare, everything's implicated. And so they entered in at the point of Sorry, what did he just say as what moves into fifth generation war moves into fifth generation warfare as war moves into fifth generation warfare i have no idea what i have no idea what that means what they're talking about no fucking clue i'm pretty sure there's been more than five generations of warfare i don't i don't even know what the the term necessarily means military question that we need to have in our scope of how do we deal with this mm -hmm. but then they started talking to people like me and we brought them all the way down to the arc i just brought you through which they were able to handle lots of people can and they got to the bottom because you know at the end of the day they are exist exclusively to be effective and they you know people die if they don't so their ability to just i'm not sure this fucking special forces operation team or whatever called in fucking jordan hall to sense make for them i'm fucking not buying this i think this is bullshit <laughs> not bullshit themselves is higher than almost anybody. And so that gave rise to the trust foundation, which is doing stuff in the context of the trust foundation. Internet of humans is one of the projects that spins off of that. Okay. So that's actually been taking a lot of my time. Uh, you think <laughs> one would imagine if you're on that journey, <laughs> it can become all consuming. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things I told him was like, guys, look, I have, 
tilted at this particular windmill probably about 10 times. And I got one cavalry charge left in me. So let's make sure that we're prepared before we do anything else. Otherwise, I'm very happy to just retire in the, the hills of Western North Carolina and call it a day. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> How about yourself? Um. Oh, uh, me. Uh, uh, are, are you are you conducting the interview, Benjamin Boyce? Are you participating in this in some fucking sort of meaningful way, man? <laughs> you like forgot uh, what he I'm, was doing? He's like, oh me, oh oh shit, that's right. Fuck, I'm interviewing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he asking him what he's up to? Because he's doing interviews. Clearly, chickens. Just chickens uh family stuff got married uh, about a year ago nice. so just like uh inherited a couple of stepsons so like figuring out what fatherhood two was like. six twelve twenty three uh 10 and 13 well, 11 and 13 i guess almost mm. so uh just right yeah. before things start adulting uh, yeah or pre-adulting so uh you know high leverage to be to give lots of attention now yeah 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 so that, that's been uh my primary um uh attentive goal or uh investment for the last year and so mm. well, these people have fucking great chemistry <laughs> and then intellectually just kind of keeping a pace on what's going on in the current uh taco sphere internet of humans i guess is a very particular way that you're, you're taco talking sphere. about particular I bet this guy's i bet this guy fucking i bet this guy uses like crunchy shells and puts lettuce on his tacos think uh broadly like what is this internet of human well the, the point thing? is that we don't currently live we live in an internet where humans serve the machine yeah so it's the internet of machines with humans attached to them and we yeah. want to of humans so yeah yeah what yeah I don't know what that means. <laughs> it doesn't have I understood to all of the words that he said, but when he put them together that way, they made no sense. <laughs> I, this is, I don't know. This is possibly the worst, the worst thing we've ever watched. There's so much I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, <with> you. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, if things are top secret, I can't talk about that, but everything else oh, like, for sure. About. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Um, Does this guy have a top secret clearance? I don't think so. I really hope not. Well, there's two different directions I want to go. I want to. I want to go after this whole trust thing and like, who can we trust? Can we trust ourselves? But before I, we do this, I, I would like to know who you are, like where you began. <laughs> That's as funny as fuck. I'm interviewing, but I'd like, who are you? Who you are and where you began? <laughs> weird questions, man. This is a fucking weird fucking interview. How you <laughs> yeah. ended up where you're going. I oh, guess. nice. Okay. Yeah. So where, where does your story begin? I guess intellectually or spiritually or biologic, biographically, I guess. <laughs> Wherever you, biologically, he almost asked to you right now. How did your parents have sex? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think the biographic is not too bad. So let's start with, I am in fact a child of the 70s. So okay. I, was, I was born and for the most part, my dad was in the military. So for the most part, raised in Texas. My, I'm sixth generation Texan on my dad's side, fifth, fifth on my mom's side. Um, although my mom's side is Jewish. So the second largest Jewish community in America was actually in Galveston after Ellis Island back in the early days. So Jewish Texans and Texan Texans. Um, no, those are just Texans. Jewish Texans and Texan Texans? <laughs> are Jewish Texans not Texan Texans? Oh, man, I fucking... I don't know what's going on here. I'm sorry. I uh, I don't know. This is there's a there's a lot happening here, but also not a lot happening here. It's very odd. Yeah. Raised, went to college, Texas A and M, and then started my out of Texas journey going to Harvard Law School. Um, moved to Southern California because I didn't know any better i just knew that <laughs> california was the place to be if you want to do something what's wrong state. with southern california fuck you dude 
when I moved to Southern California, well, a lot of people moved to Southern California. What, what, you didn't know any better. <laughs> Get out. In fact, uh, out of all of the states, California has the most people. One in 10 people who live in the United States live in California. Good until that was your focus, focus then. That was my focus. Yeah. My, my junior year of college. And then I think like, uh, and like three out of five of those live in Southern California computer science and economics underneath that. But my, my focus was how do you actually intervene with highest leverage in the shit show of what's going on in the world? This was 1993, but it's self-evident. It was a shit show. Uh, it was just going to get worse. So, how do you so my focus was solving everything. If, if I understand correctly, uh, my focus, I'm just going to, how do we intervene to fix everything? <laughs> And what I determined was that I was in a position, it seemed likely that I would be able to do kind of the Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, tech on, entrepreneur thing. For re Excuse me? That's not like, why would it seem likely that you would be like that influential? Like, because most people are, you know, <laughs> so what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> the, the majority of people are, you know, the Steve Jobs, Bill Gates type reasons that i can explain if you'd like um and that's why we can name so many of them lots of reasons not just because you make a lot of money but because the the technical infrastructure upon which people do their things is you know I mean, culture is upstream of strategy in some sense platform is upstream of culture and so does it make sense no yeah no I was just making sure i was doing the um the rice patties right there yeah what um and so so that, that made less sense. How do I do that? I'm not quite sure. What's the what's the thing that's closest? What can I get to from where I am now that moves me meaningfully closer to that with the you know highest return for the lowest risk? Oh, if I can get into an elite law school, that's plausible. I only like I, I didn't know that Stanford was was the right choice. I had no idea that Stanford would even have a law school for that matter. I'm stunned that this guy went to Stanford. As a, as a Cal kid, I am absolutely stunned that this guy went to Stanford. Eh, I'm not. No, I'm kidding. Of course he went to Stanford. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I yeah, I was going to say, he, he seems about. like uh, a pretty Stanford kind of guy. But I did know that Harvard was, was kind of a big deal because there have been movies about it. So, Especially yeah, since he thinks he was inevitably going to be a Bill Gates, Steve Jobs type school i went to harvard law school oh, the harvard. Correct, so why did he bring up stanford much higher perspective but why is he saying any of this honestly i don't understand learn a lot of stuff realize that there were people who knew things about law school <laughs> that they like knew the names of judges and shit like that okay um I immediately started interacting with guys like larry lessig whose name i'm sure you know he was there birthing what he called cyber law at the time um Johnson. Get out of here. You were not fucking you. Have, you uh, attended a lecture by Lawrence Lessig. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I was just uh, hobnobbing with Lawrence Lessig, the guy who created Creative Commons. You know, just kind of hanging out with him. The train was a what do you call it? A student teacher like he had just graduated, but wasn't a professor yet. And that helped me. That helped me a lot. Get more access. I never get sick of beef enchiladas. More clarity. Then I moved to Southern California. And really on the basis of the fact that most people don't read past the first line of your resume, saw the H har. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, fair. It sounds good. So I was able after some tribulation to get a job as the beginning, like in the, in the startup team of a startup company in the early, you know, web one phase called mp3.com. You may remember mp3s. I do. And, um, and that was tactic or strategic. I, I had looked at it and said, uh, Weren't MP3s invented in Germany? No, no. MP3.com, he didn't say that he invented MP3s. MP3.com was like an early place for, um, actually like an early place that a lot of independent artists put their music. Okay. He asked, do you remember MP3s? And I took that to mean, do you remember the format MP3? It's changing okay. the underlying infrastructure of media. So what he's saying is he got hired by a startup. Yep. People communicate with each other is very foundational to how culture forms. So even more foundational than say 
um, I don't know how cars are made. I said, Te technical platform of media, media platform. How people communicate with each other is more foundational than how cars are made. It turns out, are well, I guess it's more foundational for culture than specifically how cars are made. Sure, but it's not. Uh, maybe it's not, not more foundational for other things like transportation, for example. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, I'm I'm a hundred percent convinced already. This guy's a genius. <laughs> you know who, who who was convinced of that before you? Uh, himself. <laughs> Audio is about to move on to the internet. What's that window look like? Oh, okay, here's a. I'm looking at the landscape. I see that this MP3 thing is is just about to happen. I find the company. It happens to be in my backyard. I join as like I think employee number four, something like that. Um, rode them into an IPO, went to another company called Interview that was actually building the infrastructure for making the internet a truly media uh, capable network, which wasn't available at the time. Mm -hmm. Largely educational. Like I did that to learn more. I learned a lot. <laughs> then started my third company or the third start. Wait, hold on. So if the internet was not media capable beforehand, then what was mp3s.com yeah. how the fuck did the mp3 happen <laughs> yo dude this guy is like this is so weird like it's so weird listening to this guy talk about himself this guy is incredibly strange yeah. i mean he worked at some startups and he's trying to make it seem like they were a really big deal so like yeah sure whatever what made the internet a visual network and the oh, idea really? was video is the kind of the crown, at least at the time, of media. Yeah. And if we can decentralize media, then we've got a fighting chance in this thing. Okay, there were two companies involved in that, real media and macro media. Neither of them he mentioned. Right, but also, like, the main thing that brought video to the internet was uh, more and more access to broadband. Yeah. So it hadn't, like... <clears throat> He also isn't mentioning ISPs or anything like that. This is all so many postmodern Prometheus. How many, how many, how many apes does this guy have? <laughs> it's like ultimately have podcasts of Joe Rogan and Benjamin Boyce can have conversations about things that matter. Um, yeah. And so we did that. And it worked. Are you going to well. talk about anything and of substance? In 2007. Wait, so podcasts weren't, streaming media it sounds like he's talking about a company that does streaming media and podcasts specifically were invented as like non-streaming media the name comes from putting them onto an ipod you know downloading this thing these episodes onto your ipod so that you can listen to it later oh my god this feels like forever <laughs> and i was extremely burnt out um physically mentally spiritually relationally mm -hmm. and so i retired and i quit and i haven't worked for a living since then okay. oh sounds 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 nice so you're just a rich guy yep you just got you got lucky like in some ipo shit and so by 2008 we had a financial crisis and i was in a really interesting spot that i now had a lot of access like i had i could i was at a location of potential influence, meaning I was sitting in rooms with important people or smart people, like Nobel Prize winners or heads of banks or heads of states, because I just had got. Is that, that what you did instead of? He's like, I retired and then I just hung out with a bunch of bank CEOs. What the fuck? Like, when people retire, don't they like go on a cruise or fucking travel the world? He's like, I retired and I did the most boring fucking thing you could imagine. <laughs> in my sort of arc of my life and career and i was able to notice three things one was the story outside those rooms i they say on msnbc was was completely different than the story inside those rooms so the narrative that we're being told by the official channels that are supposed to tell us at least the truth and uh at best relevant accurate information was perpendicular to the story that was being told by the people who definitely knew better mm-hmm the other thing was that the guys inside the room were panicked. They actually had no idea what was going on and they had no idea how to deal with it. Oh, uh, did you tell them how to fix it all? Did he fix it? Did he cause the 2008 crash? I don't know what's going on here. 
The third thing was that as I started to dig at it wildly, they had no real conception of the fundamental concepts upon which they were basing all of their thinking, in this case, money. It's like, what? what's, like, hey, what's money? I would get kind of these economics 101 textbook answers. I'm like, no, 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 I, I, I know that. What I mean is what is money? Because that's bullshit. Let me deconstruct that very quickly. And then I get blank stares. Oh, we haven't actually thought about this. It's like, shit. So I started thinking about it. And then I started talking to other people who had as a basic disposition, think about things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what I noticed was that every time I hit a vertical, meaning a, a discipline, it didn't matter what it was. It could be nuclear nonproliferation. It could be the concentration of estrogen in amphibians, like all these wild disciplines. You, wait, the concentrate. Wait a minute. The concentration of estrogen in amphibians. Do you mean like? I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Is that what he's talking about? Do you mean Alex Jones? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> just talking to smart people it had the same basic structure which was common knowledge was completely invert to what the experts knew and then the experts were panicked they had they're like whoa this is bad and i don't know what's going on and that nobody seemed to be thinking about what's going on at the deepest level that is maybe the generator function of all this stuff mm -hmm. and so that led me to what was known as the game d phase um what so now we're talking about probably 2012 2011 I had met uh, Brett and Eric Weinstein. Oh, that sucks. At the Perimeter <laughs> uh, Institute at a conference that I think Eric largely catalyzed with a couple of other folks, uh, which is principally about economics. But of course, what it really was was a bat system to try to bring in weirdos that Eric could talk to. Yeah. Of which I was one. <laughs> and uh, well, at least that was accurate. So by that time, there was really now a gathering of enough people that had gathered around this kind of a question to begin to formulate which what what these days would be known as the meta crisis hypothesis. Are what? you familiar with that at all? Uh, in a, in a meta sort of fashion. Shut up. Actually, He's familiar with the meta crisis hypothesis in a meta sort of fashion. So to be fair, I too am not familiar i mean with the meta crisis <laughs> hypothesis i've yeah probably... but if i asked you that would you just say no i'm not familiar with that so I, if you asked me about it i'd say I, I think that sounds like some sense making shit that david fuller and jordan hall <laughs> were talking about but that's all i know about it <laughs> <laughs> right like he he's clearly just like bullshitting yeah I, very complicated way of I, responding yeah I'm, I'm i'm familiar with uh He's like, I'm not paying attention to you at all. You're just giving me views. A lot of the critiques on the meaning crisis, these various different crises. So the, the formulation- I, I think the, they all do converge. That's why I want to talk to you. Yeah, they do. They do converge. Um, so the meta crisis hypothesis, which at the, at the time was the game A, game B hypothesis. Right? So we'd say that there's something very, very deep. First of all, What's happening is connected. There's a lot of connection between the events. So if you see something going on in a particular domain, let's just go with like the European financial crisis. It's not an independent thing. It's part of a very complex system. These things are interlinked and they're interacting with each other in a profound way. Mm -hmm. It's like and weather, meaning what? weather. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, all that stuff. You, you have a, if you have a hurricane. So far, I'm very impressed with what he, what he's explaining now. <laughs> things are interconnected. Wow just you've also got rain is that all the meta is all that all the meta crisis is is the fact that like there's a crisis and things are um, sometimes connected to one another is that all he means when he says meta crisis maybe i mean not too far away isn't confusing they're connected uh, but the fact that you have um lack of rain somewhere else is actually connected but not obviously oh interesting right? so you have to be mm -hmm. thinking about these things in a certain way but then you have the fact that because that lack of rain somewhere else is causing a reduction in, in, in the productivity of the grain supply in Egypt. Is this just chaos theory? The of the president of Egypt in the Arab Spring is a lot less obvious. But if you can build the appropriate way of thinking about it, it suddenly drops out. So this is what was happening. So we were building a robust model. Okay, so this is like butterfly effect nonsense. Yeah, sort of. I think. I don't think I have a fucking soundboard thing about there being a series of tubes um the internet is not a big truck it's a series of tubes you can't just dump something on it yeah instead of um 
instead of anything about a series of, of tubes, uh, I'll just do this. She's um, promoting the website, dambadandi.com. It was operating <laughs> in relationship with each other, sort of extending complexity science to its edge in the larger context of what's happening right now in the, in, in the context of the human you know, humanity on the, in the world, or in the world, if you think of the world meaning Earth with people. Yeah. Well, I, that's, yeah, I think of the Earth with people sometimes, yeah. What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> the Earth sometimes has people. This is fucking pseudo-profound rich guy bullshit. And the yep. net, net was its back, right? The net net was, it's very large. Like we're actually dealing with a, uh, we sort of begin to build sort of a Richter scale way of thinking about it, that we're dealing with an event that's say a thousand year to a 10,000 year event at a minimum, and it could quite possibly be a hundred thousand year to a million year event, right? So a million year event is the birth of Homo sapiens. And the hundred thousand year event is the upper paleolithic transition or the, the, the emergence of language and culture. 10,000 year event is the birth of the agricultural revolution and the birth of civilization. 1,000 year event is like the collapse of the Roman Empire. 100 year event is, I don't know, something stupid. Who cares? 100 years doesn't even okay. matter anymore. What? What? <laughs> Those events didn't take that long. I mean, with maybe the exception of like the evolution of Homo sapiens, but he named Homo sapiens, which is a species. So, like, we evolved over the course of, yeah, probably a million years. But, like, there are species that have evolved faster than that. And, like, the Homo genus, you could, you could more say, like, the Homo genus took, like, a million years to evolve. Like, Homo sapiens were much faster than that. Like, going from, you know... uh Ah, oh, fuck. What, what came before us? I don't know. Homo habilis, I think? No, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. Oh, what are the okay. homos? D does uh, time... I'm sorry, for a segue, you just make me... Uh, dinosaurs wonder, before us, HK. Don't you know anything? Shape as human beings advance. <laughs> what do you mean in terms of, like, accelerating change? Yeah, like, we're, we're, you're talking about million, thousand, yeah. decade-long events, but is it not because of... The collapsing scale or, or the connectivity of human beings via the internet that events that would be a thousand year scale to take a hundred year time take that's effect as much why. change in two yeah, years that's also like reason. very retrospective you know like when you're within an event that someone later would describe as like oh this event took a hundred years to you it's like just things around you are happening and like it's not like they have an inherent they're inherently leading towards something it's just kind of like there's a, a demarcation at the beginning and a demarcation at the end like the fall of the roman empire wasn't like it didn't happen in a day you know it wasn't and built it didn't in a day happen <laughs> it didn't happen you know he, he's talking talking about these like decade long events but like you can you can retrospectively look at that but i I think it only makes sense retrospectively. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, more than hit what he was saying. Yes. So okay. Large. Now, of course, some things like um, the diffusion of, I don't know, heavy metals in water. Uh, sir, madam, person, camera, woman, whatever. <laughs> Still operate according to the time scale of diffusion rates in, in water. Yeah. Um, but other things, like the rate at which heavy metals are being dropped in water, operate as a derivative of exponential growth as mechanical. Fuck. Other things, like the degree to which AI is producing more effective ways to put heavy metals in water, are operating on the far, far end. Right? So you got these yeah. multiple different things that are operating at different time scales, and they relate to each other in yeah, complex okay. ways. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's the kind of shit. Like, that's the kind of stuff we were dealing with in that time frame. Uh, the net net of it was by the time you get to the end of that now we're sort of around 2014 2015 was oh yeah we're actually nearing the end of this eon this era uh -huh. things are going to begin to break increasingly regularly i wonder what he would say about like so he named like the evolution and i'm i sorry i keep going back to this but like right now we are currently evolving into something else like in a million years if our species lives you know if it doesn't die out completely it will be something else there won't like a 
if you took a human from now and plunked them down like a million years in the future, they wouldn't be able to interbreed. Well, maybe, but probably not. They wouldn't be able to interbreed with the people that live at that time. Across a larger and larger set of systems, and these will these will start will have will start to have um, cascade effects, and so we should expect to see the wheels come off the bus or the train off the rails, however you'd like to do it, somewhere around twenty twenty four. FYI, <laughs> this is ten years ago. <laughs> um, you guys didn't it, calculate quite correctly, did you? And it, it kind of looks like you know, kind of looks like this sort of thing in a big board. Like, okay, we're probably going to have a global pandemic. We're probably going to have another kind of global financial crisis. crisis. We should expect to see wars break out in escalating cascades that seem weirdly unable to be managed through ordinary through, through structures that previously. What exist. the fuck? Like, no, just, he's just, now he's just pretending that he predicted this or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> if he did predict this it was probably within a whole bunch of other predictions that didn't come true <laughs> begin to see the cultures begin to break apart because obviously these are all layers you know culture is a thing we can talk about it and uh, so then the mission was what can we do about it if anything is there anything we can do about it so this was kind of the game a thesis gets us up to that point game a is coming to an end and game a is a at least as old as civilization right at least ten thousand years old hmm and the roots of it, I think, are, are actually ontological. They're, it's structured in, in a way of thinking about how, like, scarcity or entropy or things like that, zero-sum games. There's a bunch of deep stuff that's woven into it. What? And the question could, is, can could we, we... Could we... A bunch right? of deep stuff. Could you extrapolate on what this game A is? Or are we talking about the way that human beings interface that's, with human beings? That's what he just tried to do. <laughs> they keep talking about... Uh, that we've heard, reheard in a lot of these game A and game B, and for the life of me, I don't know what the they're talking about they've talked about it all the time it's like some thing i guess that is supposed to be common knowledge or something i don't know what the fuck game a and game b are uh i think it's like you know those cartridges that you'd put in the nintendo and then you'd have a different like you could select two games oh like okay the one with like super mario and then duck hunt gotcha okay i think, I think that's what he's talking about i sure hope so that sounds like a lot more okay. fun than whatever he's probably actually talking about <laughs> civilization it's, is that what you're talking about? yeah civilization and specifically what i mean is the open-ended cascade of how human beings oh i think hack all the things beat me to it <laughs> the two modes on a game and watch <laughs> and how that use of technology creates an expansion in possibility that moves us further and further from our adapted environment so this is Brett, right? The Brett wrote a book. <laughs> Hunter gatherers, you know, 21st century, that, right? That piece. Yeah. And what? produces increasingly difficult to track causal chains. You know, so an example yeah. would be for a bronze or for a, a Sumerian, when I when I hoe the earth and and, and I'm able to optimize for the the fertility of that earth with regard to the seeds that I'm planting. So I'm using to technology to change an equilibrium state in a complex environment. Mm -hmm. I don't know that by doing that, I'm also killing bacteria and micro uh, and fungi that live in the earth by exposing them, by tilling them up that are mm -hmm. actually fundamentally necessary for the fertility of that soil. Right, so I don't know what I'm doing is making a technological intervention that didn't exist in the universe at all until then to get a local optimum at the expense of a global uh, desert. Right? Just, just, no, dude, dude, they're just tilling a field. Desertification. That's the idea. Right? So there's these. Mm -hmm. Tilling a field doesn't make it uh, infertile. Does he know that? That are outside of our capacity, or literally our capacity to proceed, that put us increasingly in a game of local optimization. I mean, if it did, we wouldn't till fields. For a global crisis or you know, long term crisis. And then we have to kick the can down the road by taking a larger dose of technological intervention to expand uh -huh. the scope of what we can do, which puts us on a. Okay. We, there's a race effect. Now we're on a, a, there's a vector. Like now we're stuck. We can't not keep, we have to get, do more, not less, which is okay. kind of where we are. Could, could I just uh, talk about a fertilizer? Like you, you do have to fertilize, like we've been doing that for ages too. More, <laughs> which is okay. kind of where we are. Could, could, could I just uh, interject? Uh, so I could imagine 
uh, what we call an invasive species doing the same thing, but like a plant or a microbe doesn't act the same with regard as, as humans do in their environment. So we're, we're on a different loop, but I can see other organisms doing the same loop and then just spending out that yeah, yeah. resource. Yeah. So the thing, um, the, the, the key there is that if you think like ge geometrically, uh, an invasive species is operating ultimately at the same energetic level as all of the other organisms that are, are in that niche, right? So they t happen to be, call it 10 times more effective, but not a thousand times more effective. And what happens is that by virtue of, of technology, right, which is a, a novel phenomenon in reality, we're able to get much larger multiples of effectiveness. And therefore that which drags us back into equilibrium is a different kind of thing. Uh, oh. Traditionally, okay. the way we've done it is we've had civilization collapse. That's actually been yeah. the traditional solution to the problem. Huh? Um, and it has, it works. It actually brings us back down into something which is more in equilibrium with our environment, which by the way, also shakes up a bunch of stuff in culture that was going off in crazy places because yeah. culture is unconstrained by feedback loops. It has a tendency to just go off into madness. And it needs to be cold. In, in, tra cold. Traditionally, it has to be cold. Yeah. Um, and so, but the, the game A thesis is we're in one of those, like we're sort of proximal to a Bronze Age collapse kind of event. But what's novel about where we are is that for the first time ever in human history, the entire world is entrained, deeply entrained, in a single civilization system. And the magnitude of the distance of that civilization system is like six orders of magnitude more intense, both in terms of population, in terms of I'm having, a, I'm having a, I mean, <clears throat> like you were saying earlier, like I know what all the words he's saying mean, but I'm not, he's, <clears throat> I don't think he's saying anything. I think he's saying like absolutely fucking nothing. Um, is he saying we're we're gonna kill ourselves with like i would assume if someone was saying that they would mean climate change but he i he doesn't seem like someone who's that worried about climate change uh, but yeah i'm i don't know what he means i mean he's <clears throat> i guess he's saying that the world is interconnected and so like civilization will collapse would be interconnected civilizational collapse, but I'm just fucking guessing here. <laughs> the amount of energy flux through the system. Yeah. Okay. So we would be looking at something that would be something like a global scale, um, 1 million times as intense bronze age collapse. And of course that looks, in, you know, it's hard to know exactly how bad that would be. Arguments are that it's an extinction event. Others that it brings us back down to the Paleolithic age. The likelihood that we stop at kind of like the uh, steam age or the kind of uh, mid mid 1800s is very, very, very low, but you know, non-zero. But somewhere in that trajectory, you, you can measure it a bunch of different ways. Like, why would our technology go backwards? That makes no sense. I mean, I guess if like the fucking asteroid hits the fucking planet, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is he? What kind of thing has well, you right? Like, what kind of thing has to happen for like all of the tech? And why would it like? Why would particularly like steam engines or something? That doesn't like. It's so strange, right? Yeah. Like, even if let's say civilization collapses, right, and ninety-five percent of people die. Right. There's only 5% of what there was. I'm pretty sure like 5% of those people are going to know how to make all of the things we currently know how to make. Mm, maybe not like all of them. They're going to know how to make a car. They're going to know how to make a computer. They're going to know how to make a plane. Maybe not all of it, but enough of it that we're not going back to fucking steam engines. Yeah. <laughs> There's Metcalf. Like, man, there's like, there's like hundreds of millions of people around and no one knows how to make a fire so in terms of the economic possibility what are ways of mapping it but there's other characteristics like the oceans are depleted you know how fish aren't as easy to catch uh, yeah. there's no coal at the surface there's no oil at the surface there's no metals at the surface well yeah but there's a lot of metals concentrated so there's a lot of work on or not work many people have thought about that but the bottom line is really bad right really bad
really bad. Super bad. Like bad enough to that's the bottom reaches line. the mythological level. Like it starts to feel very apocalyptic. I've started yeah. taking on the term that I'm a practical eschatologist. What? Um, okay. Yeah. And so from that point, the work was, can we do anything about it? And if so, what is a vision that is equal in magnitude to this magnitude of the problem? The but you, we, what the fuck is the problem? Can we do anything about the impending collapse that he promises is going to happen someday, maybe? <clears throat> I'm unsure. But he has a fix to sell you. Like, I'm very unsure what the problem is. Like, I'm not sure what problem he's he just something, something bad's going to happen. Is that what he means? Well, he, he, he would show you his evidence, but you see, the problem is that there is none. Or maybe I just wouldn't understand it. <laughs> I've talked about this to some people. It's like, look, if you're on, let's say you're sitting on a ship on a boat and the boat is sinking and the toilet is broken. If you fix the toilet, you've, you've done something, you fix the toilet, but that's really not the problem you should be focusing on. And it doesn't solve the bigger problem at all. It depends on how much water that toilet can flush. <clears throat> and also, he's just talking about, <clears throat> we have a saying, it's like rearranging the, chair, the, de the chairs on the deck of the Titanic or whatever. Yep. <laughs> to be aware of the fact that the real problem is the boat is sinking and your attention is focused on the local problem you can grasp, that everybody's going to be fixing toilets. And um, so that was... Can we, and that's not easy. But he hasn't given any evidence that like this real problem is real. The other thing is he has, <clears throat> it's just these like bad thing, bad thing going to happen. It seems like. <laughs> yeah. Just all of society is going to collapse for, you know, reasons. And here's uh, something to sell you that will maybe prevent it. I don't know. Like it's. It's bizarrely impossible, nearly. What is I'm it? just what waiting for the sales pitch. Come up with a way of responding to this that is equal to magnitude. So we're talking about a problem that is, again, 10,000 years or bigger. Um, and that, by the way, is the fork historically and sort of the, the way that trajectory worked, where, say, Brett went one way and I went another way. Um, because that's where the meaning crisis starts to kick into the, into the conversation. Hmm. The meaning crisis? I'm fucking having a bit of a meaning crisis right now. I don't know what the fuck this guy means. Don't look at me. Meaning crisis. The sort of psycho spiritual piece is at least as important as the socio technical piece. And they're, because they're at the very, at the very least. The psycho spiritual off. piece is as le at least as important as the socio technical piece. Correct. Do we all we we've all got that? Everybody remember that. That's that's going to be on the test. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and that because we use the psycho spiritual piece to think about anything, mm. we can't just use the existing psycho spiritual thing that we're working with to try to think about the problem. We've got to do this crazy thing, which is to teleport out of our minds. Not into insanity, but into something else that can actually respond to the reality that we're in. Okay. What? Yeah. So right. That was like the next spark of my What? Oh, that's right. He's still giving his biography. What did he just say? We need to teleport out of our minds? Hey, man. <clears throat> your biography isn't like this. You don't know. Correct. <laughs> you don't know shit about this. I really don't want my biography to be like this. So where do you aim to not hit sanity? If you're, you're literally, uh, you live inside of order and outside of order is chaos. And you know that out there could be a place of silence where you could view order or review order. Yeah. Where, where do you start to aim? Uh, Jupiter. Tension or... Yeah, what are the building blocks? He knows that those aren't physical things, right? Right, this is... <clears throat> those aren't like locations. Right, like it's it's a metaphorical or figurative. What, what but I, that's not metaphorical. Or figurative. What he just said is like the only way you could interpret that is 
if he thinks they're physical things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he doesn't understand that what the, the the word salad coming out of Jordan Hall here is supposed to supposed okay. to be like figurative, like that you put okay. your mind somewhere outside <laughs> of your mind. I don't, now, now I'm fu- now I'm fucking <laughs> now now my mind is fucking. I think my brain is starting to leak out my fucking nose right now. Actually, that's a great question. Um, wow. So let's see. By the way, are we recording this? Yeah, we are. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is that a version of "Isn't it great that we're having this conversation?" Or is that something else? I'm not gonna let this go to waste. <laughs> I think that was more of I can't believe we're actually gonna put this out on the internet. Sure, let me see if I can give you. The, there's a the com- the most compact answer, which is by the way not the way I did it. So I'm trying to give you at that least that's what I would mean if I were asking that after saying all that bullshit. Check out what he says here. the The answer. Let me see if I can give you the there's a the com- the most compact answer. No, you're probably not going to be able to do that. It's probably going to take you half an hour <laughs> to fucking not say anything. Actually, dude, come on. <laughs> which is by the way not the way I did it. So I'm trying to give you the benefit of my experience. So far, he's so, taken half an hour to to say, you know, we really should step back and look at the overall problems of humanity rather than focus on the little ones. So this moron uh, on the right is Jordan Hall. He's a sense maker, which is <laughs> interesting. First order, can you critique? Can you find a can you find a critique that allows you to get some sense of what wrong answers look like? That's helpful. And so, okay. for example, McGilchrist. McGilchrist's critique is very helpful. He's able to say, hey, look, anything that is sort of clearly or likely the result of a deeply left brain dominant point of view is the kind of thing that you're not going to find the right answer in. So, and the inverse of that actually turns out to be and something that seems to be more- uh, Juco, thank you for a resubbing and I'm deeply sorry for this. <laughs> in a whole brain way of looking at it is likely useful. So sure. So he believes in like the left brain, right brain thing. Right. And unless he doesn't believe it, like unless he doesn't believe it literally, but more like sort of figuratively because i think people i think most people i think most people do know that that's your brain doesn't really work that way um but he may mean it sort of figuratively but i don't know he may just mean he may just not know that your brain doesn't work that way in that direction (laughs) Um, others as you can do a survey say okay well what are what are existing practices that seem to have long lineages that are oblique that are not the same as mine but have been able to hold on you know they're not uh how do i say it they weren't invented in the last year, right? They're not cults. They're actually lineages that have depth to them. And what happens if you kind of drop into that lineage? Can you get a parallax? Can you do consilience on the larger problem for multiple different, plausibly valid, um, psycho-spiritual mental forms? Now, fucking, he was absolutely just fucking winging it right there. He was like searching. <laughs> he was like was just searching for the next word, right? Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say like what he just said what he just said right there makes no fucking sense he fucking winging it he was like fuck fuck what's the next word what's the next word <laughs> yeah. it's very interesting is that, that as that process begins to develop um, what you begin to notice is that um, let me see if I can figure out the right way of putting it the dominant mental model or the psycho spiritual state that is typical of game a late stage game a typical of late stage game a now what does that mean is that, is that like is that like the end of monopoly when when the property is all bought and you're just waiting for somebody to fucking go bankrupt <laughs> late stage game a you know when the levels get like harder and like you you've got a lot of like items staged up but like stored up so like you haven't used them in forever and you're thinking like the game's almost over i gotta start using these items and you use them all and then it turns out the boss was really fucking easy with all those items you saved up most people in the world right now is actually a flavor of insanity and so healing i'm just describing how i played breath of the wild (laughs) into a more fundamental mental mo- uh, mindset which is mm. a deeper substrate that is upon which other structures are built is in, not just entirely available but actually sort of generically useful <laughs> not becoming sane as a basic level is a first step so it turns out we're actually not sane but dysfunctional 
Like we don't have a, a sane structure that doesn't work. We actually have an insane structure. So Juco, we started late tonight <clears throat> and that's just up and down. I think the also I'm just really tired and kind of burned out. So people, people are showing up here tonight and being like, oh, Dave's low energy. So healing that insane structure back into a, a sane substrate, which is available, then gives you a lot more capacity to be it's the heat will be more now staying sane a responsive structure on top of that um hmm. that, that was a kind of a major finding yeah so uh i guess then we have to ask what is sanity what do you mean by that is that a metaphor or is there a <laughs> metaphor that makes it make sense is this whole ah. thing just a metaphor ah yes so sanity would be something like a proper relationship with actual reality thanks okay with the whole of actual reality I mean, meaning not like all of reality completely but not with a part of reality but not other parts okay. what wow that's a tall and, order for a little squishy human being organism to do yeah that. but we're it's sort of naturally part of it you know, this is the right brain left brain right the right brain has diffuse awareness which is oriented towards the larger whole the left brain has focused concentrated awareness which is oriented towards parts if you what the fuck is this guy talking about you have an analytical With this all this <clears throat> all this right brain left brain stuff is bullshit maybe he's just talking about it figuratively or like the way that people maybe he's using it as but this stuff is all bullshit it, it, your brain doesn't work that way have a mind that becomes analytical and tries to simulate wholeness i don't think that he is being figurative i think that he thinks this is real political parts that's insanity as soon as okay. you say look i have a mind that is capable of sort of being in relationship with wholeness qua wholeness in the same modality as wholeness and can look at parts i'm that's just natural that's just part of where i am that's the okay. uh, a lucky accident actually it's not at all it's intrinsically necessary as a result okay. of the, how reality works but that's what i have then you say okay i can go there and from there i can start doing interesting stuff okay so is that something well if it if it doesn't seem like that can be arrived at by thinking your way into sanity it seems like you have to integrate practices practices that's right. right yeah you definitely can't think your way into there from insanity to there that's a bad thing many people have tried that by the way you end yeah. up in a really bad situation when you try to do that yeah i've seen photographs of nietzsche nietzsche in his later years or or simulationists and if, what? if you fall into simulation theory it's simul like they're not even talking to each other it's strange <laughs> it's like they're it's like they're just fucking both saying things theory is one of the many things that happen when you try to stick in this category of insanity and try to return back to sanity that everything is uh basically a algorithm uh, a self-perpetuating algorithm or just uh again the 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 metaphor um kind of eats up reality so because you're thinking through a computer you imagine the whole world as a computer yeah yeah exactly i, I, I mean he could have said anything there and the guy would have been like oh you get it <laughs> you're one of the very you get it you get it um i personally did not understand what he just said there no, because that's fine. you're thinking through a computer you think the world is a computer <laughs> what <laughs> yeah like i said he probably could have just said anything and the guest would have been like oh fucking, you're you're right on track <laughs> the let me see my way of imagining imagining reality i will endeavor to take the met metaphor at all any given metaphor my way of imagining reality I will take as being reality. Simply put. Okay. Uh -huh. Suppose you go, hey, the actual thing is to give up my way of imagining reality. Notice that. Is he still giving his personal biography? <laughs> All Maybe. It's actually not a falling into madness, but actually a falling into reality. And then I can begin to reconstruct native faculties to begin to navigate reality properly. But what if your view of reality matched reality? And then you like fell back. But then you were like, now I'm a Scientologist. So then you had to practice. Lots of practice. Yeah. All kinds of crazy practices. In my case, I had to learn how to feel properly. Hmm. Like Braille? No, like emotions. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I think oh he, he tried to make a joke there, and then the guy did not get the joke. He wouldn't play along that time. He's like, no, actually, it's the only time he's like, no, that's incorrect. <laughs> I mean this very precisely. Like I'm sitting in a chair, um, 
I'm imagining a moment and you know the guy i'm talking with goes okay so you've gotten to the point where you fully recognize that you can't think your way out of this I'm like yep got it so now you have to do at least at a minimum you have to be able to discern feelings i go okay what's that like he goes <laughs> okay well let's start simple how about sensations do you do you have a sensation a physical sensation anywhere in your body like yeah sure i can feel that i'm sitting in a chair I can feel kind of cold air blowing on my face and this kind of warm, fuzzy feeling in my chest. He's okay. That one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Spend some time noticing when you feel that, is there something going on in your experience that seems to be correlated with it? that You could give a name to, <laughs> right? That's drunkenness. That's my actual experience of life. Wow. So practice Maybe heartburn. It's lots of practices. That's not practices, warm and fuzzy practices, emotional release practices, relational practices, getting into a relationship. Maybe a cat that's practices, sitting on your chest. Practices of learning how to be a parent, like all that kind of stuff. These are all practices that are, by the way, minimum viable practices for a sane toolkit. Yeah, right. Um, and then, you know, I tried all kinds of different drugs and I tried all kinds of different, uh, you know, subcultures, did the indigenous thing, did the Buddhist thing. Did, they did the indigenous thing? No, you didn't. Dude, you just probably you probably just annoyed a bunch of First Nations people by talking forever. That's not doing the indigenous thing. He did the indigenous thing, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you judge him for that? The Hindu thing, like all that kind of stuff, too. Hmm. And then he did the Buddhist thing. What the? I want to go in so many different directions. Um what is it like yeah like what the fuck do you mean you did the indigenous thing <laughs> i want to go in so many different directions um what is it like to shape shift through culture what different directions um what is it like to shape shift through culture uh what does that say about your ability to do that or a human's ability to do that and what does that say about you to be able to just like adopt, plug yourself into the indigenous, plug yourself into mm. um, Christianity? It, it means that he <laughs> can go somewhere and annoy people no matter where it is. That's what that means. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's it just sounds like he's an entitled white man because <laughs> that is what entitled white men do. <laughs> All these different modalities. What does that do to one? Yeah. So that. let me start at the beginning. I think that's actually native. Uh, okay. I'll say this like I say it more precisely. Um, humans run culture, which enables us to be uh, niche traversing animals. And we can be in one niche. We can unplug from that niche. We can traverse to another niche, which requires a different kind of culture, and we can actually modify that culture. So we are not obligate. Culture is not obligate. Sorry, a specific culture. But like, so something that he's missing in this and something that a lot of people miss when they, they go out and like try and experience other people's cultures, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. Uh, like you can get a taste of someone's culture, but you can't really understand it because like you kind of have to have had the background in that culture to understand it. And especially if it's something like, indigenous culture because if you weren't born and raised as like an indigenous person experiencing how other people view you and how other people treat you as an indigenous person then like you just can't know you just don't have those experiences yeah but i think he means he took peyote <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> us and we have a, a plasticity in the ability to navigate from being a desert people to being a jungle people in at least some number of generations all the way and some of us are must by necessity be more affordant to that because they're the ones who have to uh prototype the new culture as they move across okay so that's mm -hmm. ambient that's just a native faculty okay. um mm -hmm. so now the question is what's the, right you know what i can't take any i can't take any more of this <laughs> <laughs> i can't take any more of this <laughs> Yeah, that guy was insufferable. God damn. <laughs> well, we checked in on a sense maker. Um, Great interviewer, though. Fantastic <laughs> interviewing skills. Oh my god! Uh, those questions were top notch. Couldn't <sighs> be better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god! 
<laughs> well, I think I'm going to actually uh, read out the podcast portion of this show because <clears throat> I have I have some I have some words. I'm sorry for this episode of the Intellectual Dollar Tree. We'll never do that again. Um, <clears throat> but if you want to check out what happened after this, we're going to go ahead and give this one away as a freebie. So uh, if you head on over to eplex.store or uh, patreon.com slash echoplex, you can download the rest of this. Though after um, listening to the first hour and 10 minutes of it, I don't know why you would. This is Boomers by Periscope. I need. I absolutely have never needed a drink more in my entire fucking life.